this out. I posted my um um podcast thing last week, and I seen the numbers uh, move up. I guess I need to promote it even more. I've sent messages out this morning, inviting people to come on on um on to Zoom with us this morning. I'm not sure how many is going to to come in, if any at all. But I wanted to um to share to talk with y'all this morning. What the Lord said to me was, um, He brought to me. An immature or imposter. Immature or imposter. And uh, what the Lord was saying to me is there there are things that that happens in our life that we literally have to define what it is that like caused that or provoke the certain things that happens in our life. So it ties into uh, spiritual maturity is what I kept hearing, you know, I I was hearing the Lord talk to me about with spiritual maturity. I can recall doing messages on spiritual maturity where I did maybe, I think it was eight messages, um, an eight-part series on spiritual maturity. And so the Lord was just talking to me concerning that this morning. And what he was saying to me is, is imposter or immature? Did I make that decision because I'm an imposter or did I make that decision because I'm immature? Did I make the decision because I'm an imposter or did I make the decision because I'm immature? And so what he was saying to me is, and I'm a problematic preacher, you know, so what I do is, is I'm not one that's going to always just tickle your hiney. I'm one that's going to really show you what's going on because it's the internal things that causes us to lose externally. It is the internal things that we hide and internal things that we don't deal with that literally takes us down through there and causes us to to be in front of people one way, but then be a whole nother way in, in, in another spectrum or at another caliber. And so I believe that we really need to be honest people. I do. I believe. I know honesty hurts. I know it does. You can't talk to me about the fact of being honest and the pain that it causes. I know because I done had to be honest in some situations that showing up didn't feel good. It feels better to tell a lie about it than to just tell the truth about it. But imposter or immature? Imposter or immature? So when uh, when the Lord was talking to me concerning this, he brought up two references, one example of an imposter, one example of someone that was immature and in the reference of how they handled things. So to not have to go into the full text of scripture, I'm going to tell y'all where it is in case I do decide to go in and to read some of the text that is there. Uh, the prodigal son was immature. The prodigal son, and that is found in Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son had an element of immaturity about himself. Now, the imposter comes from Acts chapter 19 with the seven sons of Sceva. Their father actually was known as a a chief, a high priest is who their father was, but they wasn't. They were trying to live according to the standards of their father, but they were not prepared for the standards of their father. Holy Spirit, I love you this morning. They were not um, prepared for the standards of their father. So it, it just, it really, really is a conversation that, you know, I really believe needs to be talked about. It needs to be discussed because many people, you know, people can, we have a thing about ourselves. And when I talk about things, I'm talking about me as well. We have things about ourselves is, is that, you know, we tend to uh, if we hang around something, we tend to want to act like we've become that thing when really we are not that thing. You know, if we hang around a rich family, and but we poor as all get out, we tend to want to act like, you know, we are the rich people or whatever as well. When in reality, we are not rich. You know, our family is poor. We have this thing about ourselves that likes to, you know, to live lives of being imposters. But then we also have this element about us that is immature as it relates to things. And so what we have to do is identify which one of those natures are are we operating in when it comes to things? If for uh, an example would be if I am in the in the in the um in the presence of someone, let's say it's a president or a CEO of a company. So I look at this person as a high official, so to speak, you know, someone that has prestigiousness or, or someone that 
uh, I admire or I look to because of their their position. And so uh, I make a mistake, you know, I do something wrong and I literally uh, and, and, you know, it comes up. Well, it's going to be I'm going to be challenged as to whether I'm going to tell the truth about this or not. And what happens, you know, and it, you, you know, I'm I'm going to be challenged with whether what what am I going to do? Am I going to be an imposter, or am I going to be immature about it? To be an imposter about it would be for me to act as though I did not do it. I knew I was guilty, but to act as though I did not do it, to carry on with the rest of the group, knowing that I have made a mistake, I have messed up. That is the ram of. Of, of an imposter. Uh, so to be immature about the situation would be um, for me to literally, you know, say, well, I, I didn't, I, I, you know, I mean, it, it was such and such that caused me, you know, to have had to do it. It, it was because of uh, uh, Johnny left that chair out, and that that and that, you know, that that caused me to do it. That is a a a handling it of a an immature essence. And so, what we have to do, one of the 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 things that causes us to struggle in our life of living for God in wholeness, like we should, are those little things like that. It is the thing that the Bible talks about: those small foxes that destroy our fruit. They are the things that take our fruit off of the tree because we literally, you know, or it causes our tree to not produce the fruit because these are the things that we won't deal with about ourselves. Uh, you know, when we heard the thing when we were little about little white lies, you know, well, you know, she just tell a little white lie every now and then and we would make an excuse about the white lie being told every now and then or what have you. Well, that white lie then becomes into something else that literally now warps our character. It literally takes our character in a whole different direction. And so when you see the prodigal son, let's start with the immaturity. The prodigal son realizes that he has an inheritance that, that you know, he knows about this inheritance that could come to him. And he's not ready yet for the inheritance, but he runs to his father and says, give me all of what belongs to me. I want my share of what I know is mine. I want it. But he's not mature enough to actually stand in the place of handling that to which he has now requested. So that is the immaturity. There, There is uh, things about us as to where, we, you know, we have to literally walk things out line upon line, precept upon precept, because the immaturity can literally cause us to be in a more damaging state than than it is for a positive state. Now, this is what I come to realize about the prodigal son that I didn't ever think about. It just, as you think about things, you begin to see more revelation in it. Check this out. The prodigal son acts for all his inheritance. All of his inheritance. So at the point of his father passing, was there going to be anything else left to give him? Y'all can talk to me this morning. Y'all can talk to me. Was there going to be anything else left to give him? Because he requested it. Give me all of my inheritance. Give me everything that belongs to me right now. I want, I want it, I want it all. And when the inheritance was being set up for such a time, because see, please hear what I'm saying to you. While we are in the father's house, while we are under the father's care, everything that is needed is provided. I need y'all to hear me this morning. While we are in the father's house, under the father's care, everything that is needed is provided. There is no need to be requesting for anything because there's food for the table. There is clothing for the body. There's shelter for the head. There is everything that is needed. It is provided. The inheritance is what is set up for a time of when the father. Wait a minute. Can y'all still? Okay. It says my internet messed up. I don't know if I went out. The inheritance is set up for a time when the father is not there. At a time of maturity. When it's time for the son to go out on his own, the inheritance was set up for that time. 
but he was requesting what was set up for a different time at a now time when he was not mature enough for it. So at the time when he would need it, he wasn't going to have anything. God help us. At the time when he would need it, he wasn't going to have it. Because he'd already requested it at an immature time. So one of the things this morning, listen, this is one of the things I want y'all to to say this along, uh, you know, with me. I'm going to say it, but I want you to say this this morning. Father, allow me to have things in his proper timing. Okay, you heard me. You said it. Father, allow me to have things in his proper timing. In his proper timing. You might think that that is simple, but let me tell you something. That just saved your life. That just saved a lot of things in your life if you said it from sincerity. Father, allow me to have things in his proper timing. Because if you get it too soon, immaturity will cause you to destroy it. Immaturity will cause us to not be able to handle it. Lord, help me this morning. Immaturity will cause us to be in a position as to where it's not synced like it should be. It's not line on line, precept on precept. But because it's not ready, and I've gotten it before it's ready, it's not right for pleasure. And it's not right for pleasure so it's going to end up being distasteful. It's like picking fruit before it's ready. It's going to end up being distasteful. It's not going to taste as good. Because it's not ripe. It's not ready. It's not ready. So Father, allow me to get things in its right timing. When it's time for me to have it. Please understand what you just spoke over your life. You literally just put your life in sync. You literally just put your life into right perspective. Saying A, B, C, D, E. Not me being a person that's standing at A, but I'm literally trying to live my life at G when I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for it. So the prodigal son was immature. Are y'all following me? Let me stop this morning. Let me pause to make sure. So the prodigal son was in a position of immaturity. He was immature. So I want y'all to talk to me this morning. Tell me what is it that you should do if you are immature in a situation. Give a recommendation of something that you feel needs to take place if you are in if you are immature in something. If you your car is towed up and you don't know how to fix on cars, you're immature. Give me a recommendation of something that. As you go to somebody that is uh, that works on cars, and you do research to see. Good, good. So you pretty much become a student. Is what you're saying. You become a student. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else want to give a suggestion? What is it that... Anybody else, you can give a suggestion. What is it that you would say needs to be done if you realize you're at a place of immaturity regarding something? So it's me and Toya by ourselves this morning. Because we can do ours one on one. Along with the new question, 
could also ask somebody that's had the same problem, you know, who they used and how it was handled and get it right. That's good. Yep, that's good. That's good. But if you'll notice, y'all basically still said the same thing. It's pretty only pretty much only one answer to immaturity. That's pretty pretty much only one answer to immaturity. Anybody want to take a shot at what it is? Y'all both said it, but it sums it up into one thing. Say it again. All right. Someone else said something. Say that again. I, I said take accountability. You got to be honest with yourself. You know what you know and where you are. And then be honest that you don't know it all. So that you can be a student. Mm -hmm. It is a student. It is becoming a student. That is the only solution that there is for immaturity. Because to be immature means that I am not yet developed in that area. And what causes me to become developed in an area is, is I have to become a student of someone that knows. I have to literally become a student of someone that knows. Okay, so now next thing, now that we've identified that I've got to become a student, let me tell you the next thing about being a student. I push this stuff real hard. But I push it for a reason, because it's where people are failing at. Even in churches, they're failing because it's not taught to people, because people are afraid to deal with it, but I'm not. Here is the situation. I first have to identify that I, I need to be a student. But in order for me to be a student, I've got to humble myself. I have to do exactly what was just expressed I have to admit that I don't know. That I don't know. The prodigal son was in a position of not admitting that he did not know. He thought he knew. He thought he knew more than his father. So he requested, give me my inheritance. Give me all that belongs to me. I'm smarter than you. Son, you're not ready. Yes, I am. No, you're not, son. Son, you're not ready. Yes, I am. Give it to me. I mean, I want it. I want it all now. Give it to me. Son, you're not ready. Yes, I am. It's mine, and I want it now. Immaturity. So let me show y'all what immaturity, things that immaturity would do. Immaturity is going to always become louder than maturity. It's going to always become louder than maturity. It's going to have to express itself in a loud nature. And, and in expressing itself in a loud nature, that's what we call proving a point. Have you ever seen when someone proves a point? They are, they literally, they got to be loud about it. They got to make sure that it's known that I'm proving this point. So immaturity is always going to speak louder than maturity. It has to literally get on top of maturity in order to drown maturity out because what it's saying to maturity is, is I'm smarter than you. I know more than you. I can do it better than you. I've got to drown you out. And that's what the prodigal son was doing with his father in the essence of his father trying to talk to him to tell him, son, you're not ready. Yes, I am. Give it to me. I know what I'm doing. I'm grown. I don't need nobody telling me nothing. I'm grown. I don't care what that preacher say. I'm grown. They just want to tell you what to do anyway. You all them, I'm grown. I'm grown. I'm grown. Yeah. But a grown person doesn't have to express it like that. I'm grown. 
It doesn't have to be expressed like that when it's truly genuine adulthood because it understands what it needs to do when it needs to do it, whether it needs to hold or whether it needs to fold, whether it needs to walk away, whether it needs to run. It knows exactly what it needs to do when there is really maturity. So he was very immature in his actions in desiring to have something that was stored up for him, something that was keeping him, something that was being preserved for him for a time when he would need it most, but yet he asked for it quick. Give it to me now. I'm going to use natural analogies. Uh, say, for instance, if the Lord was to say, I'm going to, um, you know, if, if say a prophet, prophets, God used prophets still in this hour, in this day, the Lord still moves prophetically. Everything about life has to have a prophetic element to it. So you have to understand that. So when people say that prophets don't exist today, that's a lie. They, 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 they talking crazy to you and I can prove it to you because everything has to happen in a prophetic realm. If you said today, I'm going to, um, if you said today, I'm going to service tomorrow, you've just prophesied. Because, see, it hasn't happened yet. And so you're speaking it into existence because it hasn't happened yet. So you're literally, you've are you literally just prophesied. So for them to say that prophets do not exist anymore, just all oh, strange outrage. It doesn't make any sense for that to be like that. That is so not true. So then God still used prophets in this day. So I'm going to give you an example of, of something. Say if a prophet says to you, I'm a single woman, so I'm going to use it in this context. If a prophet says, to me, um, I, you know, I, I see you, uh, I see the Lord sending a husband your way. I, you know, I, I see, I see it, you know, I see him coming. I see the Lord sending. Okay. So now the prophet has now given me vision as to what it is that, that they see in order to turn it in route to come to me because it has to be prophetically spoken in order for it to come towards me. Even in your own life, you prophetically speak. If you say, I'm going to be a nurse and you get up and you start going to school, you just prophetically spoke over yourself. Now you're putting it into play because you're going no, to school. No, so you're, you're going to school. Okay, so this is the thing about it, right? Okay, so this is how this is how it works. You prophetically spoke into your life concerning things. So prophet says to me, I see a husband. I see a husband, you know, coming your way, or however the case may be. All right. Now, what happens is I've got to understand that I'm now going to be challenged. And what's going to be challenged is the fact of am I mature enough to allow this to produce in the timing that is scheduled or am I going to literally out of my immaturity say I want the man and I want the man now that's what the prodigal son did his once he identified he had an inheritance because you can't request what you don't know he identified that he had an inheritance, that there was an inheritance left for him. So he immediately, because he knew that something was set for him, he immediately began to say, I want it. Give it to me. That is how we find ourselves in dilemmas. That is how we get in situations as to where we don't allow things to happen in their fullness of time. We don't allow things to take place when they should take place. We go out and help God in doing it ourselves. It's because a prophetic word or a prophetic unction has literally come our way and we know that this thing is, is set for us. There is a, a desire, see, before God gives you anything, he'll always give you a desire to have it because that desire is what produces prayer and prayer is what produces the promise. So if God wants to bless you with a new home, then God is going to start putting in your spirit for this new home. So you'll find yourself, if there are credit issues, you'll find yourself say, I need to get me in. I got to figure out how to, you know, get me with somebody to get my credit straightened out and all this because you are now in pursuit of what it is that God is wanting to do. 
you. It's now become a desire for you to be able to have, but you can immaturely step out in it because there's always going to be an imposture that shows up before the promise. It's always going to be something that literally tries to take you off the course before the promise could come. The enemy heard when the prophetic word came to you as well. He heard it all and he set in a motion, a plan of motion in order to let's knock her off course. Yeah, God said he's going to give her that Bentley, but how about we just go ahead and knock her off course and go ahead and give her the Porsche. No, he said, now the Porsche could be a valuable car as well, but God said that you were going to have a Bentley. But see, in maturity, I want it and I want it now. So I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to do this myself. I'm not going to wait. I want it and I want it now. So this is a result of what immaturity does. Now, I need to know how many of y'all are willing to tell the truth as I am to say, I done did this before. I done allowed my immaturity to cause me to jump the gun on some stuff and I bumped my head. Uh Uh-huh. I got, yep. Uh Uh-huh. See, I I done did it. I done allowed myself to get in a fix in my immaturity. It caused me to literally bump my head and to get in a fix. So let me help you to understand something. God is about timing. Now, God does not live off time because he's eternal. But time was created for humanity. At the fall of man, time began to tick right then. That is the reason why the Lord would say to Adam and Eve, he said, from the very moment that you eat that fruit, you're going to die. Your timetable is going to start at that moment. So humanity lives based off of time. That's why we have an ending, uh, I mean, a beginning and an ending. God does not live off of time, but because he knows that our life is going to only consist of so much time, he now literally has to work off that time. If life is only going to permit 85 years of living, then God has 85 years to put into it everything about you that he wants to put into it. So there is timing concerning things. The hardest part with us is that timing aspect. I don't wait on that timing. I've been in a situation where I ain't want to wait on that timing. What? Uh Uh-uh. I want it and I want it now. I don't want to wait on this timing. This weight game seems like it's, it's, it's torment. This waiting. And so God has timing. And immaturity is what causes us to move out of timing. So this is what I want y'all to say. Father, please help me to get in sync with your timing. May sound simple, but baby, when I tell you, you just spoke some things in your life just then. You've literally put your life in the right perspective. You have literally called your life into proper alignment by just the right words. The right words. I love when the Bible says, it, I, I'm going to try to quote it. I can't re- I may can't quote it just like it say, but it talks about how the right words in, 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 in the right season literally brings like happiness to the bones to, to, get, a, to get a right word. And so to be able to speak a right word and to have it in its right timing literally will save our lives. It literally will put us in a right perspective, put us on the right course, going in the right direction. So literally just to be able to say, Father, allow my life to be to be synced in the right timing concerning what you would have. What that means is, is you literally just said everything that's out of order. Everything that's trying to rob me of the promises that you have for me, it now got to jump in place. If I'm not supposed to have it till October, then I won't get it till October. 
if I won't get it. Even It even brings things into proper alignment that we've allowed to pass us on by. Because there are two elements to immaturity. Immaturity can cause you to grab some things before time, but immaturity can also cause you to allow some things to pass you by because of not being mature enough to grab the concept of what is being given to you. So immaturity can cause you to forfeit it. It can literally cause you to push it to the side. Immaturity can. There are two different levels to it. In the prodigal son, we saw that the prodigal son, he forf- he wanted it prematurely what was his. But you can see in another essence where not being mature enough to know the timing of something can cause you to literally walk away from it. And then you realize, dang, I should have did that. Anybody ever, anybody ever had that to happen to you before? Where you would allow something to pass you by and you realize, dang, I missed that moment. I missed that moment. Oh, man, God had that set for me. Or it was in place for me and I missed that moment. See, the immaturity is what will cause us to miss the moment. Because what happens is, is we're wrestling then with whether... You know, should I do this or not? Should I do this? I wonder if if I miss my moment, it's it's a matter of should I do this or not? Man, I wonder should I should I take this action? Should I? Oh God, I I, is it? Should I do this? Should I not? You know, well, you we 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 take on that mind, and so that is a level of immaturity as well, because that right there is rooted in not trusting. That's what that is rooted in. That means I'm not trusting. And if I'm not trusting, then I, I, I won't move at the time of when I should because I'm not trusting. I'm not settled in it. So now I'm struggling with it. Whether I, oh Lord, I don't know. Uh, should I pick the yellow one? Should I pick the blue one? Should I go? Should I stay? Oh, should I do it? Should I not do it? That exemplifies a an internal struggle, which means that I'm not trusting. So immaturity, I need to know y'all following with me. If I get ahead of you, if you don't understand something, we talk in here, okay? We talk in here, just so y'all know. The people that trim, y'all know this. We talk in here, so you're able to stop me to ask a question, should you want to. Don't let me get too far ahead of you. You need to walk in sync in harmony with me. So there are two different types of immaturity. One immaturity is, is when the prodigal son saw his inheritance and wanted it before he was ready for it. Another level of immaturity is when we won't move with time. When the timing is set and we don't move with it, that shows immaturity. Y'all talk to me this morning. Do you understand what I'm saying? It literally, so this morning we're talking about immaturity and imposture. Right now we're on immaturity. These are things that we have to look at ourselves in regards to. They are not things that look good. I can just tell you that. They are not things that look good. I am I am a facing me pastor. That's what I would say. I literally, I, I want to bring those meetings back. I am a facing me type person. I did no victory has ever came until I faced Delphine. Till I literally saw her and was able to tell the truth about her. Able to deal with her. No truth ever came. No amount of healing, no deliverance, no blessings, no breakthroughs, nothing ever came until I dealt with Delphine and was honest about the place of where she is. And so This is the thing about it, that immaturity that we have looked at thus far, that prodigal, he was very immature in the essence, give it to me. I want it and I want it now. He had a promise. A word had been given to him. He knew the inheritance was there. 
So it's the same thing as the example of what I gave. If the Lord says to me, you know, I, I, I see your, I see, I see it, Delphine. I, I, you know, if, if a prophet comes to me, someone comes to me prophetically and they tell me that, you know, the Lord has said that there is something coming my way. Say there's a husband coming my way or, or whatever the case may be. If I, if I, I've got to first understand because that prophetic word has come out that there is going to be an enemy. The enemy is going to do some things too. In order order to stop that prophetic word from becoming real in my life. He's literally, he heard it just as well as I heard it. And he saw, he, he knew then what the plan was for God. Oh, so God wants to bless her. Well, I tell you what, let me get up in him. You know, so that is, that, and that's exactly how it happens. And I don't care who it is that happens for every one of us, everybody on the face of this earth. When the prophetic word has been released over your life, that joker is going to come and he's going to come to try to throw a monkey wrench in it to take it off in another direction because he wants to kill the promise the promise of God is where blessings flow, the promises of God is where favor resides, the promises of God is where peace resides and he doesn't want us to have any of that so he's literally going to come to try to throw a monkey wrench in what it is that God has set in motion so I have to be mature enough mature enough I'm going to be challenged in two different areas. I'm going to be challenged in the essence of, okay, am I am I am I going to move too quick on this or am I not going to move at all? See, maturity causes us to move in sync. It moves us in harmony. That's what learning about God is. It's not as hard, y'all, as people would try to make it to be. It's not that hard. It is just learning to move in sync. And you bump your head sometimes. You learn through mistakes and trials and all. This is this going to be two ways that you're going to learn how to learn how to develop in life. You're either going to listen to somebody when they try to tell you, or you're going to bump your head. It's going to be one or the two. How it's going to happen. The Lord will always sin, the Bible says he sends a warning before destruction. So the Lord is going to always send a warning. That would be conversation. Somebody saying something to me and I got to take heed whether I take heed to it or not. That is God's way of coming to me to stop me before my demise. Okay. So if I don't take it that way, then he'll have to send a consequence because a consequence is the result of one's actions. That's all consequence mean. The result of one's actions. And so now I've got to get a consequence because I would not submit to the words. I wouldn't listen to what it is that was coming to me. Those are the two ways that we are going to be taught. So when the teacher says in school, I do do not go over and touch the blackboard. She has now verbally spoken to me. Do not go over and touch the blackboard. Oh, Delphine goes over and touch the blackboard anyway. Now has to go to Mr. D's office and get a paddle and see if that is her consequence. Because she did not listen to the words. So those are the two ways that we are taught, either by word or by consequence. I'm now at a place where I'd rather take it by word, you know, but I had to grow to this. I didn't just, uh, 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 baby, oh, no, I don't have a lot of consequences, you know. So I can't just tell you that I just took the words all the time. I'd be telling a bold-faced lie. I done had to have a lot of consequences, you know, but I got sick of consequences because consequences tend to hurt way more than what the word does, you know. Consequences, usually if I can't take a word from somebody, if someone comes to you with a word and you can't receive that word of correction from them is generally going to be uh, one or two situations that's going on. There is going to be a, a, you don't have a level of respect for where the word come from. That would be one reason why you will not take the word. You don't have a level of respect. You don't believe in them. You don't respect them. So you say to hell with whatever it is that they come into you with. That is one example of not receiving a word. The second thing for not receiving a word is if you just 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 pretty much in rebellion, you know, just of a rebellious nature. I'm going to do what it is that I want to do. I don't care what anybody say or however I'm going to do it how I want to do it. Those are the reasons of why someone could say something to us and then we not take what it is that was said to us. Now, 
Do, are we honest about it? Do we like to say that about ourselves? Nobody likes to admit anything wrong with themselves. But really, in actuality, we are people that are flawed. We are people that have these issues that really need to tell the truth about the issues. Healing can only come through an honest vessel. It can only come through a time of being washing and cleansing and saying, you know what, whether it is I don't believe in, you know what I'm saying, I got an issue with you because, you know what I'm saying, uh, about six years ago, you know what I'm saying? You 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 did something, or uh, or uh, uh, you said something, and ever since then I've been had, uh, you know, this issue uh, uh, with you as to where I couldn't believe, you know, I, I don't really fully believe you, or uh, whether it is um, six years ago some other people hurt me, and now it's got me in a place where I don't really trust people, so I I, I can't trust what you're saying. I heard what you're saying, but I can't really fully trust what you're saying. But see, whatever whatever the case is, you still told the truth. About about it. You still told the truth. And because you told the truth about it, it now puts you in a position as to where y'all got to make sure you mute those phones. Mute your phones now. Make sure you mute your phones. Because you told the truth about it, it now gives opportunity for a healing, for a resolve. Because it just may be, say for instance, if there is a word for you you know, that, that they have a word for you that is imperative to your life. You know, they got a word that is imperative. Hold on, let me see if I can if I can get this, y'all. Let me I'm hearing somebody. I need to move. Okay, so so hold on, I need to move. All right. So, say for instance, they have a word for you, right? And it is a bona fide serious word that they have for you. You can't get it because you have these issues. You have this issue. Let me help y'all understand something that Pastor Javon Goo taught me. And I found it to be real. Nobody can tell you, give you a word. Unless they really genuinely have your heart. People that don't like you ain't going to tell you something good. If someone is able to give you a word of wisdom, they have your heart. They they really want to see what's in best interest for you. Because your, your, your haters, as they call it, they don't want to see what's in best interest for you. They could care less whether you survive. They'd rather see you go down. So if someone could give you words of wisdom and you struggle with receiving words of wisdom from someone that has given them to you, that's something that's going on internally, which is a root of immaturity. The root of it is, is a level of immaturity. It could be immaturity in the essence of I haven't allowed myself to heal from some old wounds. It could be immaturity in the essence of they may have done something and, you know, and I haven't moved past that, that they did. First rule of thumb. First rule of thumb. Kill everything for just a moment. And let me take y'all back to the first rule of thumb. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. When I say in nobody, it's N-O-B-O-D-Y. Nobody's perfect. Anybody that you come into relationship with, you need to already know it's going to be some issues somewhere. I don't care if they smell like roses the first 50 days. By the 60, something going to stink. Because nobody is perfect. And if you allow yourself to get caught up in, in people's imperfections, it will play you out of what God wants to do. Because mostly everything that God does in our lives, He does it through somebody. That car that you got, that's financed through that bank. That bank is owned and operated by people. 
God had to touch those people hard to lend you that money. See, everything, it comes through people. There is no way to escape people. I don't care how much of a hermit you want to be. There is no way to escape people. So God does things through people. So you cannot allow what one person has done to literally stop you from believing in people. Because mostly everything about life is based upon people. That's a level of immaturity to handle it like that. It shows immaturity. And what that does is, is that takes us out of the timing of God. Because it now puts us in a space of wrestle. You will need to do something and you won't do it because you wrestling with, should I trust him? Should I not? Should I do that? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I go? Should I stay? Should I get you, know, you, 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 you wrestling? See, that's immaturity. Y'all talk to me this morning. Y'all talk to me this morning. Where we at? Come on. We got a real session this morning. Open your mouths, people. Are you in the building? Am I by myself? Am I the only person that want to be mature? Amen. No, you're not, Apostle. Good morning. I had to get out of the pen of the machine. Yes, you're right. Um, wavering, I called you to live God because you trying to do it yourself. Wavering. See, my readiness this morning went out there to wait because I done been hurt like this and before. I feel like the same thing. It'll cause you to miss God. Most definitely. It's immaturity. It's immaturity. Amen. It's immaturity. Amen. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with being immature and we're going to deal with being imposters. All right. So anybody else before we move on. Before we move on to imposter, we're on immaturity now. Anybody, what did you get out of uh, immaturity? If I need to slice it more, we can slice it more. However, it doesn't matter. As long as we get the concepts of this, we've got to get this in order for us to become better people. It's just the bottom line, man. You know, they say what the world needs is love. I completely agree. But do you understand what all love consists of? Do you know people really don't know what love is? They the Infatuation is not love. They really don't know what love is. There is something about love that is so pure it's ridiculous. It is so pure it will scare you if you really got the real fullness of, of love. It, it's, it's not puffed up. It's, it's all of those things that 1 Corinthians 13 says about it. It doesn't envy. It doesn't. There is no way that you could have a genuine love and have envy, have jealousy. There is no way that you can have a genuine love. It's not like that. It's so content. It's so at ease, love is. Love doesn't put you in a rush. You know, love doesn't just, it doesn't just, oh, I got to, got to, you know, I got to, oh, I got to, no, no. Love is so gentle because love resides from the most perfect gentleman that there ever is. God is the most perfect gentleman that there will ever be. He is the example, the epitome of what a man should be. God is the perfect, the perfect example. So it's love. So it's just... So I agree, the world needs love, but the world has to understand the elements of what comes out of love. And what we're talking about today is coming out of the element of love. His immaturity. He didn't have a genuine respect for his father. That prodigal son, he did not. He did not have a respect for his father. He didn't. Mm -mm. If he had a genuine respect for his father and knew that his father had his best interests at heart, he wouldn't have conducted himself the way he did. He did not have a genuineness for the father. Mm -mm. 
See that that when we're not genuine, you gonna do some crazy stuff when you're not genuine. You you go you 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 gonna do some stuff when you're not genuine. Genuine see it, it'll curb you. It won't let you do certain things. You know, a genuine person doesn't even struggle with uh, desiring to hurt. Because genuine is connected to love. So it's not going to hurt. It's not going to cause harm. Genuine. That son, and I need y'all to hear this. That was the son. That wasn't some joker down the street. That was the son. His own son was not genuine with him. That's why I watch everybody. My mama, my children, I watch everybody. I don't I ain't telling no lie. I don't play by nobody. That genuinecy was not there. He was not genuine. And because of not being genuine, he could not see that his dad had his best interests at heart. From the very moment when he realized that there was something that was promised to him, he wanted it right then. I don't need you no more. Give me my inheritance. Boy, you ain't ready now. Give it to me, daddy. Uh, son, son, you ain't ready. No, I want it. Son, you ain't ready now. It's yours, but you ain't ready. I'm trying to tell you, you ain't ready. Took his butt out there. Got in a mess. Literally lost everything he had. Got in a complete mess. The only thing that was reserved about him and that was the best thing that was reserved about him was his life. God didn't allow it to take his life. Thank God for that. But he lost everything that he had and he had no inheritance to come back to. He had a position with the father to come back to, but he lost his inheritance because he had took it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying to you this morning. You better, my whole head like to turn then. You, you, you better hear what I'm saying to you this morning. He lost it. He had his position as the son, but he lost his inheritance because he asked for it prematurely. He didn't wait for the timing to get it. He wanted it prematurely. So he got it prematurely. He got penalized for getting it prematurely. Lost everything that he had. Come back to the father. The father received him, loved him with open arms, but he come back with nothing. And what do I have to give you, son? You ask for it all when you left. So what do I have to give you? Be careful, y'all. Be careful. Don't put yourself in a predicament where you have nothing stored up. Be careful. Any questions, any comments about immaturity? Because I need to move to imposter. Any questions, any comments? Imposter. Imposter is going to come out of Acts chapter 19. I haven't read any scriptures, but I told y'all the prodigal son is in Luke chapter 15. You can look at it at your leisure. Acts chapter 19 is about the imposters. There was a one, um, one chief priest that had seven sons of one skeeper. They became imposters. They were going to literally attempt to try to mimic their father, but they did not live the life of their father. That is a very dangerous thing to do, is to live the life of an imposter, because it is going to cause something to happen that is not good. His father, their father, it was seven of them, their father, they had saw their father and Paul deal with demonic spirits. So they decided that they would take on the nature of dealing with the demonic spirits as well. Although they had no type of spiritual um, discerning or spiritual power in order to take on these demons. See, you got to be careful. You cannot live based off of somebody else's anointing. 
you have to develop your own anointing. That is having a, a form of godliness when you take and try to live off of somebody else's anointing. That's why you better get to know God for yourself. You better get to know how to walk in God's truth for yourself. I don't care if the person beside you can lay hands on the sick and all of them recover. You better get to know what your anointing is and live for God for yourself. You cannot live through them. You can't go get five or six people and lay hands on all of them and call them to recover and that's not your grace. That is not your anointing to do. You got to be careful so they can stay, they, they began to be imposters and in being imposters they got exposed. They run up on these demons and they say to them, we adjure you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Paul, we, and, and, and the demons come back and said to them, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. And Delphine, we know. But who are you? That's what they come back and say to him. But who are, who, who, who are you? Who are you? You don't possess what it takes to deal with us. They literally, the scripture says, beat them into the streets and tore their clothes off of them. Please understand what that means. Someone looked to say that was a physical beating that they took, but it has a spiritual connotation to it as well. It literally means that they were exposed in the streets, which means everybody saw what was going on. The whole truth came out. Everybody saw it. They were exposed and they were naked in the streets, it said, which means there was nothing that could be hidden anymore. Everything was out in the open, as the song says. There's nothing left to hide. Everything was out. That's what that signifies. Everything was out. But it was a result of them trying to be an imposter. They were doing something that was not of their level to do. Something that did not fit their caliber. But they were attempting to do it and it literally caused them. It caused them greatly. Look, listen, listen, listen to me, Linda, listen. Like that little girl said, listen, Linda, listen, listen, Linda, listen, listen. Let me say something to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please. Don't put yourself in that type of dilemma. Do not be an imposter to the to, to the Christian world and do not be an imposter to the world. Christians should not be imposters to the world. world. The world should not be imposters to Christians. That is not good. That is what the Bible says when it talks about how they are wolves in sheep's clothing. That literally means that is the world trying to impersonate Christ. But then there are Christians trying to impersonate the world. It does not work like that. They are sheep in wolves clothing. It does not work like that. It does not fit. That is an imposter. And it is literally going to cause a public exposure. You can, you can, you can bet your money. Argue the point with me today and let me know how it turn out. Let me know how it work out. There's going to come a public exposure. It said he ripped, took them out into the street. Street. Everybody know. Tore their clothes off. Public exposure. Everything was out in the open. Nothing left to hide. All because they were imposters. They were not true, authentic. To who they really were. Okay, so their dad was the chief priest. All right, so you in the house with your dad, but you ain't taking on the nature of your dad. You need to just be honest about it. You don't need to be telling no lies. You don't need to, as soon as daddy walk in the room, you want to start shooting. You don't need to do that. If that's not what you do, then that's not what you do. That's an imposture, and it literally got them in trouble. It literally got them in trouble. Literally. Caused an exposure to them out of this world. You can't, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Y'all talk to me this morning. Are you following me thus far? very dangerous it was a very dangerous thing for them to do it got them in a fix it got them in a fix in a serious fix 
So immaturity and being imposters, it's not good. It's just not good. It doesn't have, it does not have any benefits to it. And it's not associated with God. Is there anywhere that you've ever seen in scripture or heard or even within what you know about God that shows that God is immature? I'm asking a question. Is there anything that you ever heard, know about God, think about God, that shows that God is an imposter? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So those things does not, they do not fit God. Allow me to tell y'all this. Living for God is not as hard as what it seems. It's not. It's not as hard as what it seems. It's a beautiful thing when it's done correctly. A beautiful thing. It has its times where that flesh is going to get crazy. You know, where that flesh, uh, the Lord is saying, not now, not now. And that flesh is saying, this J.G. Whitworth and I want my money and I want it now. That flesh is going to be hollering. It has those moments, but it is those moments as to where God gets the closest to you. It is those times as to where you can get God in the most purest form of who he is because he shows up in those times strong. It's not, it's nowhere near as hard as what it seems. And I want to say this to y'all for y'all to know this. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is, is that it says that the Lord will not withhold anything from them that walk upright. So I want to kill the thoughts inside of your mind that makes you think that God is trying to hold something from you. He's not. He'll hold it until it's proper timing. But he's not withholding from you. There's no good, it says, no good and perfect thing will the Lord withhold from them. That walk upright. The problem is not God withholding. The problem is us walking upright. We won't do it. We won't walk upright. Because we tend to want to give way. To all of the things that the flesh desires. So we won't walk upright. But I'm here to tell you as a living example. A living witness. It's not as hard as what it would seem. It is a beautiful thing. This place that I'm in. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It is good to get up and get up in peace. It is good to go through the day in peace. It is good to go through the night lying down in peace. It is good. It is good to allow God to be God. To the best of his ability at being God. And that is God. Nothing short. It is good. It is the best relationship that you'll ever have. It's no greater love than the love of God. The immature nature that we have and the imposter nature that we have. The church is full of imposters. And it is full of immature people. That's why I don't like to do church. Because it's full of them. It teaches people to tell lies, not to tell the truth. I'm after the truth. I'm after the truth. I don't care whether it's a nasty truth or good truth. I'm after the truth. Because it is the truth that makes us free. We say that, but we'll steady tell lies. We'll steady tell lies. We'll steady believe lies. We'll steady walk in lies, but we say we believe that. Where it says it is the truth that makes us free. It really does. It brings about a freedom. It's nothing better than telling the truth to someone that loves you anyway. There is, I ain't found no greater joy. When I tell you, that to me is better than ice cream, and I love ice cream. There is nothing like being able to be honest with someone 
that genuinely loves me for real. It brings such a freedom to me. I don't, I just can't I can't tell you what it does to me. Even in the midst of me having to say I was wrong. But because I know I can say it to you and you're not going to change up on me is everything. That is, I, when Lord help me, if I'm lying, God, take my life sitting here right now. That is everything to me. To know that I'm in a place that I messed up, you know, that I've done some things. But I can tell you the truth about it and you don't switch up. Oh, man, ain't nothing better than me. You, That's better than a ribeye steak. Because that exemplifies something that says a lot to me. That says to me that I'm safe with you. That's what it says. I'm safe. And that is the thing that we look for. Father, I bless your holy name. That is the thing that we look. God, I love you, man. That is the thing that we look for in this earth. We look for safety. When we get in covenant with people, we're looking for safety. When we take on positions, we're looking for safety. That is the number one thing. Am I going to be safe? That's why they have safety precaution classes and all this type of stuff. I, I got I to gotta let you know that you are safe here. That's what I've got to express to you to let you know that you're safe. So we look for safety. And if I have if I have error and I'm able to talk to you about my error and you don't shift up, baby, they're fiend safe. Delphine is safe, and i tell you something else, too. You're going to rank very high in my life. You are going to hit very high in my life. You may even hit higher than some of my family members, and that's just the truth. Because I'm looking for safety. I want someone that I can be safe with even in my imperfections. Because I'm going to have them from time to time. And if you show me that, you got me, hands down, hands down, because I don't have to be immature with you, and I don't have to be an imposter, I don't have to be neither one of those, I don't have to be immature, and I don't have to be an imposter, all I gotta do is be safe, because that's what I want, is to be safe. I base my relationships a lot on safety. I do. Am I safe? If I don't think I'm safe with you, I don't want to deal with you. I'm not going to deal with you. Anybody that I've disconnected from, I say I've disconnected from. Because now take that. That don't mean the same thing as people that have disconnected from me. There are people that have disconnected from me. And that was because of their choice or their sin or whatever the case may be. But people that I've disconnected from, me, myself, their fiend, is because I didn't feel safe. If I don't feel safe anymore, or if I don't feel safe from the rip, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. not feeling safe breeds imposters. I got to pretend to be now. Y'all talk to me this morning. Where you at? I hate it when y'all be so quiet like this and stuff like, you know. I I wish God just got me in a jam, boy. I tell you, he do. (laughs) I'm not the crowd. I'm sorry. I am not the crowd. I I, I can't make no. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not the crowd. I'm the cloud. I'm following the cloud to the best of my ability. I'm not the crowd. So I know it sounds different. And I know a lot of times, I bet you, it's hard to, it's hard to respond to me. I know it's hard to talk back to me and to talk about things. I know it's hard because it's, it, it means I got to I gotta admit that I'm wrong, you know. I got to admit that I struggle in that era, I, in that area. I got to admit that I got to own up to that, you know, and I'm big enough to say it about myself. So, you know, if I'm big enough to say it, that don't know, uh, hey, don't nobody need to pretend like they ain't. 
because I'm the one that's leading this thing. I'm the one that's called. I'm the moderator of this thing. And if the moderator can tell the truth and the moderator can say, I may not struggle with it like I used to because I've learned to develop in it. But before me getting to the place that I am right now, I struggled with immaturity and being an imposter. You know, I, I didn't struggle so much with the imposter as much as I did the Im, Im, immaturity because I ain't ever liked to be fake. That's why I, I imposter. No, if I didn't like it, you pretty much knew I didn't like it. Even if you had to tell about my facial expression or how my body language was, you could pretty much tell I didn't like it. So I didn't struggle with it, you know, in that much. But I have been an imposter now. I have been in environments where I would not, you know, let them know that I wasn't something because I didn't want to be looked at different. You know, I didn't want them to look at me different. So I've been guilty. You know, I've been, I don't mind telling my truth. Y'all know me. I'm a, I live this thing. I live this. This is Delphine, baby, 101. All day, every day. I live this. I've come to find out that the truth makes you free. So it doesn't bother me. So I get it that it's tough, you know, sometimes to, you know, to, to have some type of rebuttal because, my God, man, I get it. But I need y'all to talk to me. I, I need y'all to, to tell me where you are. You know, what 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 is what did you hear? You know what I'm saying? What has God spoke to your heart? What what is it? You know, you can do everything but cuss me out, because if you do that, I'm going to cuss you back out. I want stuff in a hurry. I want it right now. As for confident stuff, uh, not to feel like, well, why did I got to keep on waiting? I done did this. I done did that. Why did I got to keep on waiting? I get it. I get that. That's that's his vision. Dead on. Immature. Don't want to wait. Dead on. Don't want to see people. Yeah, that's that's development. It's just part of it's part of growing in God. It's part of growing in God. I, 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 you know, I love the fact that you were honest about it. It's part of growing in God. That is a stage everybody's going to go through. I don't care who you are. You're going to go okay. through that because you come to Christ as a babe. And then you develop into maturity. So you're going to come to that. The hardest thing about it is, is a lot of times having to admit that you're in that place right now. That be the hard part about it is telling the truth and saying, I'm here right now, you know, because, it, you know, it sounds better to you to testify about it and say, you know, I used to be there. But when you have to say, oh, I'm there right now, boy, I mean, that makes you a that makes you a huge person. Jesus name and I do believe the Lord is going to honor that because of your honesty I do I do because of your honesty I do I do I believe that the hardest part is is saying that I'm there now it's easy to testify about something because that means I used to do it but what about telling the truth about saying you know what that's where I'm at right now today I'm sitting in this seat right now today. That's when it get tough because then you be thinking like Tupac, all eyes on me. All right. Anybody else? Where you at today? What you got? Where you where you at? What you got this morning? I had to fight to get this word. I do believe that the Lord has heard that honesty. 
and that development will begin to progress for you. I decree and declare that based off of the honesty that is coming forth, that development will speed up for you to get to the place of maturity as to where you can allow God to move in his timing. That's that prodigal. Father, please kill the spirit of the prodigal son out of my life. Say that. That's all you got to say. If you said that, in Jesus' name. All right. Anybody else this morning? Where you at? Y'all talk to me this morning. Hey, y'all. It's Rika. <laughs> Rika has been in hiding. Rika is an imposter. Rika is the most pure. And Rika thanks God for people who are more holy of Rika. Rika don't take the time to embrace those who love her and work through her adversity, my adversity, so I pray her. I take position over it. And I have a lot that I'm having to come to terms with. So this is me trying to embrace me. And it's not pretty seeing the truth, but I'm ready for it because your brother's going to hurt you. But I'm in my head right now. I'm ready for game. The honesty and the truth. May it cause the light to begin to shine to bring you to the place of true deliverance. It's in Jesus' name. It's not always an easy thing to do, but it is the best thing, man. It is the best thing. The best thing. The thing that I love the most about it is when I can do it in a place of love. If I can come to you and say, listen, they accusing me of two things, but I didn't do but one now. I shot their shaft, but I didn't kill the deputy. And you say, you know what, Deputy? I'm with you. Let's come up with how we're going to prove, you know, there may be a consequence for shooting that sheriff. But what we're going to do with that is, is we're just going to believe for the best. They say you can get up to 20. Let's believe God they're going to give you probation. And let's come up with a way how we're going to prove that you did not shoot this deputy. Where's your alibi? As to where you didn't shoot that deputy. See, and then my respect and my regard is going to go to a whole nother level for you. Because that is a love that my heart has looked for. Everybody wants to be protected. Everybody wants someone they can trust that they feel safe with. Situations and circumstances is what teaches that. You don't know how safe you are until you've been in a predicament. So them circumstances, so y'all, you know, stop thinking that everything has to be so perfect all the time. Oh, make room, hey, hey, you got to have some room somewhere for some bumps, some, some bumps and bruises. You got to have, you got to make room somewhere to bump your head because that's how the relationship, you know, you, you get the truth out of it, the true genuine essence out of it. God knew, God knew the mistakes I was going to make. God knew in 2009 I'm going to save this fool in 1997. And this fool going to scald this boy in 2009. He knew it. But see, I had places where I could be honest. And those places of where I could be honest started bringing healing to me. And I could see me. It wasn't so much of him, it was me. What's wrong with you, Delphi? What caused you to behave like that? Because you're going to stand in the judgment seat for you. Yeah, it might have been wrong what he did. You know, I caught him with another woman. And that wasn't right. It was infidelity. It wasn't right. But why, were your, why did you react the way that you did? Why did you respond the way that you did in scalding him? That came from you. 
that that came from an anger on the inside of me. What was it that was going on? I I was, you know, I felt betrayed. So it pushed all that stuff up to the surface. But I had a place where I could go to tell the truth about it. That didn't say, yeah, you know what Delphine done did? Wasn't calling folk, you know, girl, let me tell you what Delphine done did. Miss Holy Roller. No, I had somewhere I could go where they said, all right, look, you know what I'm saying? Let's pray about this. And what do we need to do? All right, we might go to jail. Well, if you go to jail, I'm going to get you. Okay, then. That's what they told me, too. You go to jail, I'm going to come get you. Okay. See, I had a safe place. And my respect for my safe place still exists today. Because I'm going to always respect who keeps me safe. I'm going to always respect where I found safety at. Some of the things about us needs to be fixed, just worked on, because we just don't carry a level of respect like we should. And when you don't carry a level of respect like you should, these type dilemmas happen. Things take place. Stuff happens, you know. I didn't regard, you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I, I didn't regard like I should. I know I didn't. Because everything that I went through, I had already been warned about. Boy, I remember one night I jumped in my car, had a gun. I was going to go shoot Quincy. And I was going, I could take you right to the spot where I was trucking down below the Walmart in Enterprise. Wide open. And Brother Joe called me right before I got right there at that, 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 that um, red light to turn to go to Dothan. Little sister, what you finna do? Uh-uh. The Lord just told us, uh-uh, little sister. The Lord just brought you on my heart. You finna do something crazy. See, see that word came to me. That word. Although I cared about brother, I didn't have a real respect for brother and what brother spoke to me. Because I wouldn't let his words stop me. So when you don't have a real respect, like you should, you're going to have to get a consequence. But if you have a genuine respect, Father, I bless your name. If you have a genuine respect for someone when they speak a word to you, you'll take, you'll go based off their word. You'll go based off their word. If the doctor tells you you got cancer, I bet you you'll go based off his word. But, see... Because you got a level of respect. That's the doctor. The doctor said that. So my respect wasn't where it needed to be. And I further ended up having to apologize to him. To say you know what brother. I did not respect you as I should have. Even though I was around you like I was. I didn't respect you like I should have. I didn't. Because I would have heard you. And I would have known that you had my best interest at heart. So there was no way you were going to tell me anything wrong. I was finna put, I was finna take myself to prison is what Delphine was finna do. I'd have went down and shot that boy. You know, shot him. I would have been ended up in jail. Wouldn't listen. I did it again with Pastor Jay. Wouldn't listen. And I scalded Quincy that time. You know, see, when that not listening. So I get it, but that's why I try to tell folk now. So that you don't make the mistakes that I made. You don't have to deal with what I have to deal with, take consequences, man. Because see, I had to realize I didn't have a level of respect like I should have. I was not respecting like I should have, bottom line. Bottom line. You can be around a person, but it doesn't mean you respect them. It doesn't mean you honor them. You don't. You don't honor them as you should. Because in honoring them as you should, you literally would take heed to what they say. You would take heed to what they say if you really honored them. So you don't honor. You don't honor. Anybody else got any questions or comments? 
Let me see. I see a chat here. I can attest to all that you are saying. That's, <laughs> see that? I got a witness. <laughs> this is real talk, man. This is real life. This is what I do. Anybody else? Any questions or any comments? Where y'all at this morning? I got somebody on here with an Atlanta phone number. Who are you? Because I know a couple people from Atlanta. It's this 404 number. The 404 number, can you hear me? Uh-huh, um, I can now. Yeah, this is Tamika. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing some other stuff, but I'm listening. Tamika. Tamika. Tamika Star. How are you this morning? I am yes. great. <laughs> Tamika, what, what what did you yeah, hear I, this morning? lot of, um, you know, especially the immaturity, um, that, that's a journey that I'm on and struggle with every day. You know, I, I had a, a big lesson probably about, you know, 15 years ago that started that journey. And, you know, I, I think I've come a long way, but I'm still battling with it just because of just the type of personality that I have. So I'm, I'm trying to learn to listen and engage know when God is speaking to me or when that's me speaking to me <laughs> so that I move according to his plan not mine so you know this this you know what he's speaking on this this morning is right on time for me and um you know confirmation that that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and and just you know further lesson in how to become stronger in that area amen amen Oh, God, do it. <laughs> oh, God, do it. Well, welcome to my world, Tamika. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yep, this is my world. This is how I do it. This is how I rock. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, you know, just listening to you and, and saying that this has been the struggle and, and learning to listen to God, I know that that's why I was led here because it's part of the journey get me where he wants me to be so you know you're speaking on those things that I need to hear for sure mm -hmm. keep me on the right path yeah well if you hang in you know I'm guaranteed to do that because I'm sure not going to be responsible for putting you on the wrong path <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe and trust that Yes, ma'am. I tell I say it quickly man I tell them at the ministry if I start going hey why y'all get away from me don't let me right. lead. Mm -mm. Don't let me lead you wrong at all. Please don't. I ain't worth it. Uh uh. If I start tripping, y'all get ghost. <laughs> get out of here with the quickness, man. With the quickness, it's just a whole different style of things in the way that I, you know, my format. My format is none. It's not. It's like none other, in so to speak. I do believe it's probably some more people in the world that you know that do this. It's just very minimal, I believe, um, because mm -hmm. it's not um, it's not typical. It's just not a typical thing. It's not typical to teach people to face themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. You're not supposed to do that. You know, you're supposed to, you know, you know, you know. She, let me see everybody else that's wrong and. All that type of stuff. You're supposed to, you know, um, you're supposed to just let me walk in my pity and all. You're not supposed to teach me to, 
you know, to see myself and to see the error of my ways and to heal from my old scars, you know, old wounds. That something happened to me. You're not supposed to do that. You know, don't don't do that. But I'm a firm believer in that. I am a firm believer in overcoming Delphine. Mm -hmm. That has been the person that I've had to overcome. I've had to over, you know, overcome. I'm going to say it like this. I'm overcoming her. I don't think I've overcame her all the way, but I'm overcoming her Mm -hmm. and the things that she's had to face and, you know, why she made the certain decisions that she made and she walked a certain way and all this little kind of stuff, you know, from so much hurt, man. I mean, I, I remember so much. I went through, it was just so much hurt and my life has just had so much hurt. And in order, you know, and for me to be in the place that I am, it's amazing to me. And I say that, you know, and I mean it in all honesty, it is amazing to me to be in the place that I'm in. Because my life, when I look at it, the things that I can remember were so painful. They were painful. They were very painful. You know, they were from being rejected, from being abused, from being misused, from being, you know, raped, from, you know, just so many disadvantages. So many different things mm-hmm. from from wanting people to love me that wouldn't love me. Good God, now that one hurt. That one hurt right now. I think that was probably the worst out of all of it. I can remember, you know, I remember lies being told on me as a little girl. And they wounded my they wounded my heart as a little bitty girl. There was a rumor that that went out that my neighbor across the street from me was was messing with me like I was a dog, and it was so not true. He didn't do that to me, but they was lying. It was going around all in the school and stuff, and they didn't realize what it had did to me. It was just told me up. I mean, it right. damaged me, you know. And to overcome all of it, and from wanting to. To, you know, then getting in places where wanting, you know, wanting guys to love me, but they didn't love me, man. Horrible. I mean, horrible. Trying to make myself be seen, you know, by man, horrible. Just really, really horrible. And so to now sit in a place and tell people to help people to see, listen, honey, you got to love yourself. You know, you've got to see your own worth in you. You know, and anything that attaches itself to you needs to attach itself to the beautiful you. It doesn't need to attach itself to the wounded. Father, I love you. To the wounded you. But it needs to attach itself to the beautiful you. You know, to the healed you. To the whole you. It needs to attach itself to that. If it can't attach itself to that, then you're not ready to be attached to. You're not ready. You're not ready. If they cannot attach themselves to young ladies that are listening to me. If a guy can't attach himself to a whole you, you ain't ready to be attached to. You're not ready. You're not ready. All it's going to be is just you you bleeding on folk is all it's going to end up being. You know, so there has to be a wholeness that has to come. So, and that, that's just in overcoming everything that it's had, you know, I mean, and it's, it's been some horrible things. It's been some real horrible things that has happened through in, in my, you know, all down through my past. And so I'm, I am a product of overcoming. That's all I can tell you. I'm a product in it, but I didn't overcome until I looked at Delphine when I looked at her. And I had to realize, you can't be mad at them for not loving you. That was their choice. You can't get mad at, you can't get mad at people for their choice, Delphine. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you go to the people that do love you? Don't you know there are some people that genuinely do love you? You so looking at the folk that don't love you that you can't see the people that do love you. You know, you could, you can't get mad at them for that. You can't get mad at them if they don't want to hang out with you. You have to respect people's decisions. And so I started talking to myself and working with myself on all of that. And I started healing. You know, the hardest thing was was to realize that someone I loved didn't love me anymore. Or possibly didn't love me at all from the beginning. 
you know, and it was yeah. very hard. And I had a few people in my life that was shooting me bull crap that was saying things like, you know, well, you know, he really do love you for real. He just really going through a lot right now. The nigga didn't love me. Yeah. You know, and so you just kept me locked up in some stuff because I was looking for hope the whole entire time. And because I was looking for hope. You know, I, I, when people would say things like that right there, it just kept me hopeful for just a little bit longer. And, but it never panned out to be what they said it was going to be. It never panned out, you know. It just never panned out to be that. It never, you, you said, I thought you said he was just going through something, but he really loved me. Well, hell, he must have still been going through it because he ain't quit yet. You know, so it was just. I, I've been now. I've been now. And saying I had to start saying, Delphine, you are a beautiful chick. Girl, right. you need to do what you need to do for yourself, man. Okay, Delphine, you don't like the fact that you are extremely overweight. What are you going to do? Dang, it seemed like it's so hard for me to get this weight off of me. What are you going to do? I started researching the gastric sleeve. Okay, let's go. Let's start getting this stuff done. You know what I'm saying? What is it that you're going to need to do right. to make you love you? What is it that you need to do to help you to admire yourself? You know, what do you, when you look at yourself, you got to love you. I started doing every bit of that. I look at myself. Now I go back and look at pictures. I even go back and look at videos, you know, and glimpse the different things with me. And I'd be like, dang girl, you girl, <laughs> no, I'm not you did that. <laughs> You know, yeah. you know, and yeah. so it's just the loving, you know, getting to that place, having to bring myself to that place where my value, my value, I know I have. Mm -hmm. I know I have value. You can't tell me any different. And I'm not going to allow right. you to treat me as if I don't have value either. I'm just not going to allow it. You know, I can't. So, but um, I'm going to do a closing word of prayer this morning. Before I do, anybody else got anything that you would like to say? Anybody else got anything that you would like to share before I do our closing prayer this morning? God, I love you. I feel the power of God. In such an amazing way. It's such a sobering way. I'm so calm. It's just it's just ridiculous how calm I done got in my life. It's just a sobering way. Anybody got anything? Anybody else got anything that would like to share? Or however. Dear God. Father, we love you. We bless you and we honor you on today. We thank you for allowing us to assemble ourselves together it was a fight to get here but it was worth it all father i feel sorry for the ones that did not allow themselves to connect in this morning for whatever reason that it was i feel sorry for them lord because they missed out on a a bona fide word they missed out on something that could speak to the spirit as well as the soul father i thank you for those that did tune in this morning and i pray that there were some things that were ministered that was just what was needed it was just what the doctor ordered that it was a word in due season, a word that give life and a word that give understanding, Father. Father, we bless you and we honor you and we adore you for you are matchless, man. There is none that is like you. You are so great. You are great and you do miracles so great. You do, Father. Father, heal your people today. We talked about this morning being immature and being imposters, Father. Those are things that we denounce in the name of Jesus. Those are characteristics that we no longer want to possess father but we want to possess the realness and the truth of who we are and who you are father we thank you for connecting us with genuine say father we thank you for your light shining in the midst of darkness we thank you for pulling us into a right place and for putting us back together again in the broken stages and phases of our lives god we give glory to you and we give honor unto you lord father strengthen me god as i have poured out unto your people today may you pour a blessing up over my head and overshadow me with the things of greatness to come lord in the name of jesus for doing what 
what you have given assignment for me to do. Now give us this day our daily bread, God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the hand of that old evil one, God. For thine is the kingdom, is the power and the glory. It all belongs to you. But we have been adopted into your kingdom, and we are grateful to be called your sons and your daughters, God. Have your way with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, you good people. I love you. I thank God for you. Let the word marinate on the inside so that it changes on the outside. It is expressed and changed on the outside. 11 o'clock tomorrow, trim in the building. All the way live in the building. If you want to join us, um, if you can't physically come to the building, tap in on this Zoom right here at 11 o'clock and you'll be able to listen to me. I very seldomly I'm going live on Facebook now. So you have to tap in on this Zoom and you'll be able to um, listen listen in on whatever the word is that is released. But if you're able to physically be in the building, I invite you to show your face in the building, 100 West Covington Avenue, right downtown Op Trim, LG Center, 11 o'clock tomorrow. Y'all have a great, blessed day in Jesus' name. You are just